Hi, I'm Nina, and in this video, I show you how to create a basic map using PODG, the different icon options, and how to publish your map. You can create PRTG maps either here in the web interface, as I'll show you right now, or also in PRTG desktop, which I will show you at the end just quickly how to do it, but the functionality is the same. So let's get started with creating our map. For this, we need to navigate to our Maps tab, and either you can use the shortcut and say Add Map, or you can take the long way, which I will show you. This is all our maps, and then we click on this little blue, blue plus button here and say Add Map. So these are our basic map settings. I give it a very meaningful name, which is Tutorial Map. You can, of course, adjust the size of the map and you can upload a background image. Let me quickly do this. Um, for now, I leave the access to the map to no, not public because I'm still working on it and I don't want anybody to see it. But I'll also show you later on how to change that. So let's hit create here. And that's our first look at our map. Of course, it's still very empty. So let me just quickly tell you what you see. So of course, here in the middle, we will see our map. On the left, we have our device tree. So this is what you usually see under devices. And from there, we will drag and drop things onto our map to add devices, sensors, or even whole groups to our map. On the right, you have the different icons. As you can see, some icons say static, so of course the other icons are non-static. What's the difference? Static icons are basically just an image, while non-static icons will actually give you information on the state of the device sensor. Let me give you an example. So I go to my local probe, I'll pull my AWS in here, and now we see I have 16 sensors on this one, and they're all in the green state, so all good. If I would now use a static icon, just as an example, you see that information is lost. So for today's tutorial, we'll stick with the non-static icons because it's just a little bit cooler and you can see more things. So as you already saw, it's super easy adding new elements to the map. You basically just drag and drop them from the left to the right. You can move them around and let me show you how to add one individual sensor because, of course, now I added a whole group. If I just want to be informed on the ping of my AWS US instance, I also just drag and drop it. And now I have the detailed information on my ping sensor. So let's add a couple of more devices here. Uh, let me jump to my data center and let me pull a network switch in here. I'll use our Cisco switch. And of course, I will also want one of my firewalls in here. I'll take the Juniper. Oh, that didn't work. Give me one second. There it is. Ah, now we have it twice, but that's okay as well, because then I can show you how to delete things very easy. This little trash can here. So now that we have a couple of devices in here, now they all still look the same. Just from the image, you do not really know which one is which one. So now let's finally use these non-static image icons. So let me scroll down and I'll first try to find one for our firewall. And then for our switch. And what else can we do for our ping sensor? Let me look what we have. Since it's AWS, we can use a website icon. Okay, now they all look different. So from the first look of my map, I will know, okay, this is a switch, this is a firewall, this is my AWS instance. What we can also now do is relate the objects to each other by using our connector tool. The connector tool is this little gray button you see here. And as you can see, as soon as I hover over it, it tells me drag to connect. 
So of course my ping is related to my AWS instance and by dragging and dropping this little button from my ping to AWS, I create a connection. My Cisco switch is behind my firewall, so I'll do the same. And my AWS is connected to my switch. So now we created the connections between the different objects and now we'll always know what's going on. As you can see, as I said before, AWS was a little bit boring because it just had 16 green sensors. Now on our Cisco switch, we see one warning state. And this is what you want to know if you look at a map. I always recommend to keep maps simple and nice, uh, not too crowded, so you get the information you want. Now that we're done with the basic map setup, of course, we want to know what does the map look like for others. So we switch to view map. This would be our final result. Like I said, very easy, but it's just to show you how things work. Now that I'm done creating my map, of course, I want to share it. And if you remember at the beginning, I set the access to not public. So that's the first thing we should change. So let's switch to settings here. And let's scroll down here. You have the same options again. I will now allow public access. Other options are allow public access, but disable all links except for geomaps. Of course, you can readjust your background image. You can change the background color. You can change your height, or even if you need to change the name, no problem at all. And also important, for example, if you want to hide a map from a certain user group, you can do this with the access rights. Okay, now that I allowed access to my map, I need to get sharing. And we can do this by switching to the get HTML tab here. And you see we have three options. My first option is a link which I can send to my colleagues who have a PRTG login. So because with this link, they will be prompted to log in. And of course, if they don't have a user account, they won't be able to see it. The second one is a simple link to my map and everyone can see it. So no login is required. And then the third one, let's say you want to embed it on your website. You want to show what's going on with the traffic around your building, for example, like we do here in the PHQ. This is what you can do with this iframe down here. I also, of course, wanted to show you some more colorful examples of maps you can create with PRDG. So the first one is one we use for monitoring our data center. As you can see, again, it's not too crowded. On the left, I have everything related to our PHQ, PESLA headquarter, building facilities. In the middle, I can see the most important information on our IT infrastructure. And on the right, I get a super quick overview of our services and apps. And another one which I really like because it makes great use of a background image is this HQ rack here. As you can see, we used a image of a H one of our racks and we actually put the sensors where they are within the rack. So let's say my one sensor here would go into an error state. I could just send my colleague down by looking at this image and he would know where to look for it even though he's new. So let's also show you how to do this in PRTG desktop. This is the same PRTG instance, just open in my PRTG desktop. And on the left here, you can already see the maps tab. Again, you see the same maps that you saw in the web interface before. And to create a map in the desktop, just click on this little map symbol here. And as you can see, it's the same three basic steps as in the web interface and the rest is also the same. I hope you found this video useful. If so, consider subscribing and give me a big like. If there is anything else we should talk about or there are other topics you're interested in, please leave us a comment. Also, if you have any questions, contact us at supportedpesla.com and thank you for watching.